What up, everybody? Instructor Beats back again here with another fractions lesson. Today, we're going to be talking about adding fractions with like denominators. So let's split it open and see what our objective is today. Our objective today, today I will be able to add fractions by being super awesome. All right, so just to review, and this isn't really going to come into play today, but it's always important. Rule number two, you see what I did there? When adding and subtracting fractions, the denominators have to be the same. Now, if you, in this lesson, all the denominators will be the same, but eventually we'll be getting to math where the denominators are going to be different, and when we add or subtract them, we always need to make them the same first. So just thinking ahead, we wanted to share rule number two with you. So adding fractions, all right? So we have 2, 6 plus 2, 6 plus 1, 6. We can very clearly see that all the denominators are the same. Now, a lot of people, when you add these, you might get 5 eighteenths, okay? And that's a common mistake. But when we add fractions, the denominators don't change. So my answer here is actually going to be 5 sixths. We're going to add the numerators and then the denominators are going to stay the same. Why? I'm glad you asked. So here we have two six, let's say of a, a brownie or cupcake, right? And I want to add another two six. I'm actually just going to kind of overlay these right here. And you can see now I have four six. I have four, but my denominator is still six. My denominator tells me how many pieces one whole is split into. So that hasn't changed. Now I want to add another one six. I'm going to overlay these like that. And you can see I have five filled in, but my denominator did not change. So that's something to remember when you're adding, okay? When you're adding these fractions or subtracting, the denominators will not change. All right, there are three ways to add fractions, and we're gonna cover all of them very quickly in this video, and then we're gonna get to the third one, which is by far the quickest, but you can add using area models, you can add using number lines, or you can just add using the algorithm, and that's probably the easiest, but let's start with the area models first. All right, so there are two brownies out on the table. Here you go, boom. Johnny ate three-fourths of a brownie before dinner and then another two-fourths of a brownie after dinner, right? Dessert first, dessert after. That's what I love, okay? How much did he eat all together? So I'm going to be bringing my fractions together. I see that my fractions both had a four for the denominator, so I've split each hole into four pieces. And so here he ate before dinner, so before he ate three of them. He didn't quite eat the whole brownie. And then afterwards, he ate two-fourths of another brownie. So he ate one-fourth of this brownie and one-fourth of that brownie. That makes two-fourths, and we're going to shade these in. How much did he eat all together? So you can very clearly see that he ate one, two, three, four, five, and then my denominator didn't change, five-fourths. Or you could have written this as a mixed number. He ate one whole brownie and then one-fourth of another one. My answer for this then is five-fourths or one and one-fourth. They both represent the same amount of brownie. That's how we add with the area model. We uh, draw the area models, we use our denominator to split it into the equal pieces, and then we just shade them in and add them together. And we're gonna do the same thing with a number line. So here I have a number line, I have zero and one. So if you've seen our number line video, I like to always circle my whole numbers. And I'm gonna label, this would be one-eighth, two-eighths, three-eighths, four-eighths, seven-eighths, and then one whole or eight eighths, right? Eight eighths is that big one, that fraction that's also equivalent to one. So I'm starting right here at two eighths because that's my first fraction, right? Two eighths. I'm gonna add another two eighths. So one, two would bring me to four eighths. And then I need to add one more eighth. And when I do that, I know that I land on five eighths. When I added these together, two eighths plus two eighths plus one eighth, my answer was five eighths. Now getting ready for the algorithm, look at what we just did. Our denominators were all eight, so they're the same. That means we can add them. And when we added them, our denominator stayed the same. So I add the numerators. Two plus two is four, plus one is five, and my denominator stays the same. So same exact thing we did with an area model, except now we just showed it on a number line. So that's another good strategy to use. Now let's talk about using the algorithm. Okay, so we, you've kind of seen what we've been doing. Using the algorithm just means we're going to add the numerators. Two plus two is four, and the denominator stays the same. So if you had two-fifths of a candy bar and I gave you two-fifths more, you had four-fifths all together. Pretty simple. The biggest mistake, though, is a lot of people make the denominator 10 because they're rushing through it. Just remember, when you're adding or subtracting fractions, the denominator is going to stay the same. And it doesn't matter if we're adding two fractions like right here or three fractions right here, okay? All my denominators are the same. That means I can add them. 
and I see that 3 plus 1 plus 1 would be 5, my denominator is going to stay the same. So the sum of 3 eighths and 1 eighth and 1 eighth is 5 eighths. All right, and then my last one, number 3, I have 3 fourths plus 2 fourths. Okay, and so when I'm adding these, I see my denominators are the same, so that means I can add these together. So 3 plus 2 would be 5, and then my denominator would stay the same. So my, the sum of 3 fourths and 2 fourths is 5 fourths. Now I want to zoom in on this really quickly because this is an improper fraction. We learned in our previous lesson that improper fraction is a fraction that is bigger than 1. Okay, so we can also write it either as a whole number or a mixed number. So I'm going to use my big 1 number bonds to decompose this and take out a big 1. That means a fraction that is equal to 1. I put a box around it. It's supposed to be a 1, but I can't draw very well. So if I had 5 fourths and I take away 4 fourths, that's going to leave me with 1 fourth. And I can see right now that my mixed number is 1 whole and 1 fourth. So when you add 3 fourths plus 2 fourths, you could write your answer as an improper fraction, 5 fourths or a mixed number, one and one fourth. And if you struggle with that right there, check out our video on how we can turn improper fractions and mixed numbers. Awesome video, you can probably check it out in the cards right here. All right, here is the you try. You're gonna pause the video, and before you do that though, you can pick any of the strategies you want, or you could do all three of them, okay? Uh, so I have the area model right here, because that's the first way I'm gonna solve it. But you can solve it using the area model, the number line, or just the algorithm or more than one, your choice. Go ahead and pause it and then push play to check your understanding. Hopefully you just paused it and now I see that I am adding three fractions, the denominators are 12. So I need to split this into 12 equal groups. So I'm gonna split into thirds first and then I'm gonna split each third into four equal pieces. Now I have my denominators 12, so all I need to do is shade in. So I'm starting with one 12th, there's one 12th. I'm gonna add four more 12ths, that brings me to five 12ths. Then I'm gonna add six more and I see when I add all of that up, that that is 11 pieces shaded, and I have 12 pieces for my one whole. So 1 12th plus 4 12th plus 6 12th is 11 12th. So if you got that answer and you do it with the error model, that's awesome. Let's check out the number line now. So here I'm going to circle 0 and 1, and I'm going to quickly go ahead and label this. I've already split it into 12 equal pieces, but I'm going to label it for us. And I'm going to start at 1 12th, and I'm going to add 4 12th to that. So 1, 2, 3, 4. That brings me to 5 12th. I'm going to add another 6 12th to that. One, two, three, four, five, six. I uh, passed it a little bit, and that brings us again to a sum of 11 twelfths. So we've seen the area model, we've seen the number line. Again, it gives us the same answer, just different ways to do it. This is how most of you guys probably did it, because it is the quickest. I know I'm gonna add the numerators. One plus four is five, plus six is 11. My denominator stays the same, and so n would equal 11 twelfths. Hopefully that was helpful. You saw three different ways to add. Okay, just remember your denominators have to be the same. And then once they are, it's very simple. You just add the numerators and your denominator stays the same. Thank you so much for checking us out today. We know there's lots of different uh, options online. We would love for you to leave a comment. Let us know where you're watching from. Like the video. Please subscribe. Click that button right there you see on the screen. We'd love to have you join our Instructed Beats family. Again, thank you so much. Instructed Beats, out.